Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, part of the Marine Protected Areas Center webinar series sponsored by NOAA's National Marine Protected Area Center and OCTO. I'm Zach Canizzo with NOAA's National Marine Protected Area Center, and I will be your moderator today. We're very excited for today's webinar, which is titled Blue Mooring, a Sustainable Solution for Managing MPA Moorings and Financing Marine Conservation Activities, presented by Yus Ben Fadel and Louis Vercutren. After graduating from a master's in entrepreneurship and project management, Louis joined the support service for the creation and development of CCI Bordeaux as a business advisor. After five years, he developed a support program dedicated to digital startups, facilitating their access to financing, their relations with big companies, as well as their participation to the French tech ecosystem. In 2018, he led a coordination of, of the business incubator of the city of Bordeaux. Today, there, sorry, there he supported 50 entrepreneurs that include a positive societal impact in their economic models. He joined the Blue Seeds team in November 2020 with the mission of creating and developing a project incubator accelerator in line with the challenges of marine conservation. Yus has a master's degree in business administration she obtained at the Franco-American Institute of Management in Paris. She also obtained a double degree in health management and clinical research. She worked in the pharmaceutical industry on international projects such as the introduction of innovative technologies and information systems, that is a business developer, country manager, and sector director for digital startups in varied sectors. An entrepreneur at heart, she obtained the 2019 Silver Eco Prize for her innovative innov initiative on aging well. Her project on transport solutions for persons with reduced mobility in Africa also won the Innovation Prize. Use joined Blue Seeds Adventure in <clears throat> in 2020 august 2021 as the project manager for the mooring management solution blue mooring we are very excited to have louis and you here today he's here today but before i turn it over to our speakers i would like to let you know that we encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation as they occur to you please type your question in the questions box which is found at the bottom of your control panel which is often found on the right hand side of your screen and we will pose the questions to the speakers at the end of the presentation with that, I will turn things over to Tulu. Thank you very much, Zach. Um, good afternoon. Uh, we are very pleased to present you today the activities of uh, our company, Blue Seeds, and more specifically, the marine management tool that we have developed for marine protected areas, Blue Mooring. Um, before my colleague, uh, Yus Ben Fadel, explains to you in detail how this solution works, I would like to quickly share with you our vision. In 2015, the CEO of Blue Seeds, Thomas Binet, carried out a study highlighting the existing uh, funding gap for managers of marine protected areas wishing to achieve uh, their marine conservation objectives. Um, at the scale of the Mediterranean, this gap amounted to 700 million euros per year. Uh, with this observation, when uh, we, we then created the Blue Seeds structure, um, the objective of which is to, to support MPAs to achieve greater efficiency in conservation actions. To achieve this objective, we have developed several offers. First of all, we have published uh, the practical guide to funding MPAs. It presents funding mechanisms uh, to meet the financial needs of um, uh, the army. Excuse me. Okay. Um, it presents funding uh, mechanisms to meet the financial needs of marine protected areas. This guide can be downloaded for free uh, from our website, blueseeds.org. Um, we also offer training in financial, man financial management of MPAs. Uh, the areas of expertise of the team allow us to offer relevant training in management. We have also launched a support program to help MPAs diversify their income with entry fees or concession fees, for example. Finally, we develop very operational solution within our incubator that I coordinate. Um, these solutions 
all aim to support MPAs in setting up new financing mechanisms, entrance fees or mooring fees, for example. They also facilitate day-to-day -day management, monitoring and visitor awareness. The first tool that we have developed uh, and launched in April 2021 is called Blue Mooring and tackles the issues of mooring management. This is the first project to emerge as part of the incubator project funded by the MAVA Foundation. My colleague Youth will now be able to present it uh, to you in more detail. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Louis. Uh, thank you, uh, Zach and Sarah, for the opportunity to uh, present Blue Mooring today. I'm very happy uh, uh, to, uh, to talk about our tool. Uh, before starting uh, with the presentation about Blue Mooring, I just want to talk very quickly about mooring fees and uh, say a word about the guide of financing uh, mechanism that, uh, as just uh, said Louis, you can download for free on blueseeds.org. On the guide, you will find a chapter about uh, visitor fees and the step-by-step -step process for implementing a mooring fee in your MPA. So uh, visitor fees are one of the most commonly used uh, self-financing uh, mechanism by protected areas worldwide. And uh, it allows the MPAs to finance uh, plant costs uh, from their own resources through a fee system. Entrance fee, mooring fee, which will be our uh, topic today, and uh, recreational activity fee uh, are visitor fees charged to the MPA uh, visitors. They are collected either directly to the, by the MPA or by a third party like a tourist operator and then re-injected in the MPA most of the time for um, financing conservation activities. So the benefits of implementing a mooring fee in an MPA are uh, multiple, but we can list that it's a steady stream revenue, it minimizes uh, anchor damages, it regulates frequency of boating activity, it uh, helps to improve public awareness, helps also reduce conflicts between users, and uh, it's a way uh, to uh, have the public participation in conservation. Mooring fees uh, can contribute to finance uh, boys related costs, also conservation activities on site, finance human resources costs dedicated to manage the mooring areas, and it's a way to highlight the value of the MPA. So uh, we noticed at Blue Seas that uh, MPA managers are facing more or less the same issues when a mooring zone is implemented within uh, an MPA. And uh, this is the case, either the use of the moorings is free of charge or if there is a mooring fee collection. So here are the main issues that uh, we noticed. First, a problem with data collection because monitoring and reporting of activities around the mooring zones is very important, but very difficult to undertake. Uh, difficulty to communicate with visitors coming in the MPA that are often unaware about restriction and uh, internal rules. And finally, uh, the problem with the human resources, because mooring management involves a lot of human resources at the expense of conservation activities. So for these reasons, and to help the MPA managers with a very practical solution, uh, we developed Blue Mooring. Uh, we launched a call for interest a year ago uh, to uh, select MPAs to help us develop uh, a tool dedicated to MPA managers. And we selected uh, two MPAs, so one in Italy, which is a CINIS MPA, and one in the north of France, which is Archipel de Chauzet. And uh, we developed together the first version of Bloomering. And now uh, we will be launching uh, the V2 of Bloomering by the end of the month. And uh, that's what I will present you today. So uh, Bloomering, first it's a platform for the MPA managers. 
uh, it enables them to manage the mooring zones, to collect mooring fees, and to communicate with the users. The platform is coupled with a web application for boaters and ecotourism professionals. It's, uh, it helps them for reservation and awareness. So the main features for the MPA managers, first, of course, the mooring zone management with an option of a collection fee. A data collection on the occupation of the mooring zones. It provides a reporting tool that facilitates the accounting. It helps share information with visitors on restrictions, on regulations, on internal rules. And it provides them educational content to raise awareness among uh, boaters about conservation actions. Finally, it provides an optimized buoy maintenance uh, system with a notification system. It also uh, helps them manage the moorings that are specifically dedicated to ecotourism professionals and monitor their activities uh, within the MPA. So we are talking, for example, about diving clubs, about group outings, uh, scuba diving clubs, and so on. At the meantime, these professionals uh, have access to a special interface where they can access to the history of their activity. They can make reporting of field observation, which are directly sent to the MPA manager. The main uh, benefits for the users, so the boaters, uh, they can book a boy very quickly on Blue Mooring. They can plan an eco-friendly boat trip through this app. They can discover conservation actions carried out on the site. They can find local commodities and nearby activities. And of course, they help finance marine conservation. So how it works uh, in a very practical way for a boater coming in an MPA, uh, the boater chooses the boy he wants to move on and uh, he either scan the QR code on the boy or he can go on bluemooring.org and select a boy. Then he books it uh, very uh, quickly in few clicks uh, online. If uh, there is a charge of a mooring fee, he pays it online and then he can discover the MPA and learn more about the activities carried out. So what you see now is the MPA manager dashboard on Bloomering. So uh, on this dashboard, the manager can uh, find very quickly all the data about uh, the activities on his site. There is uh, occupation uh, rates, uh, revenues, uh, bookings, uh, passes that were sold, uh, he can also find the uh, data by uh, mooring zone and he has a real-time view of all the mooring zones. On his interface, uh, the manager can create and personalize all the information that the boaters will find on the MPA showcase page on Blue Mooring. So um, it's very uh, easy actually it takes uh, around two hours to complete uh, this interface and uh, to uh, put all the boys uh, that are detected on blue mooring all the mooring zones uh, the internal rules the conditions of arrival of departure the price the term of cancellation and so on The manager can also find the history of all the bookings that were made through Blue Mooring. He can make uh, an export Excel of all the information, which he'll, will help him uh, later with uh, the account. He has also uh, a listing of all the passes, uh, the current passes and the, the last passes uh, that were both sold by uh, users. He has a real-time view 
this real-time view is dedicated to rangers uh, because they can see in real time all the boys uh, on the on the MPA, and uh, there are different uh, information that are carried out right here. So he can know if there is an incident on a boy, if there is a maintenance to do, if it's uh, currently free, or if uh, it's currently uh, used and booked uh, by a user. So uh, rangers. Uh, thanks to this uh, real-time view, can manage uh, their time and their effort on site. This is the user interface, so for boaters. Uh, you can see here the home page, uh, where uh, will be uh, showed all the showcase pages of MPAs. Uh, there will be also a lot of information about uh, conservation activities, about um, awareness, uh, through a blog. There will be also a map view and a list view with uh, the actual number uh, of available uh, boys. This is uh, the MPA showcased page. So for each MPA, the user can see um, the conservation activity, the restrictions, uh, the services nearby and activities. Uh, the NPA manager can also add photos and the link to his own website. Uh, and of course, there is a, a direct uh, link for the booking. This is the interface for uh, the booking for a user. He has only uh, to uh, inform the arrival and departure uh, date and time, the number of boaters, uh, he selects a pass or selects directly a mooring and he has the information about the price uh, which is uh, regarding the length of the boat and uh, several information. He then can book very quickly and have a confirmation of his reservation if it's uh, if there is a fee he can pay online and if it's free of charge it's uh, confirmed directly. Finally, he finds on his account all the bookings to come and previous bookings. We have a look now at the management of the moorings dedicated to ecotourism professionals. So uh, this is the dashboard of the MPA manager. As for the regular boaters, he can find uh, uh, information and data about the activities of the professionals on uh, the MPA. So uh, there are information like the total occupancy rate, the number of bookings, and the number uh, of operators, the number of people that came. Um, he can also have data by mooring zone and uh, again a real-time view to see the occupancy. In this uh, special page, he finds all information related uh, to the professionals operating on his site. So he finds all the current bookings, the bookings to come, the past bookings, the professional listing uh, that are operating in this zone. And very most important, actually, uh, there is uh, all the observation that uh, could have been made uh, by the professionals. So they can send uh, photos and, uh, and comments about observation they made on site. And this is directly sent to the MPA manager. There is also the chart that has to be accepted by all operators. Here we have the professional uh, interface. So each uh, professional operating using Bloomering to uh, book his boy has uh, access to this uh, specific interface. So he can find all uh, his boats and add more. He can also make a download Excel of his own activity on the site because um, very often um, we, uh, we noticed uh, that uh, professionals have uh, to uh, to make reports to MPA managers about uh, the uh, 
their active professional activity within the MPA. So this, uh, the aim of this is to facilitate this process. So the professional finds his current bookings, bookings to come. For each uh, one, he has the date, the arrival hour, departure hour, the exact location, the name of the boat, and the name, uh, the number of people uh, that were on site at that moment. He can also find the history of all the observations he made on site. As uh, for the boaters, professionals can make uh, their booking very easily on Blue Mooring. Uh, it's the same process. They uh, just have to put the number of divers, arrival and departure, uh, select the boat, and then select a boy. So for this, there are several ways, either through the QR code, as we saw earlier, or with the drop-down menu, or by making a research by name of the boy, or by selecting it directly on the map, because uh, they are geolocalized and they can see uh, the closest one on Blue Mooring directly. Then they accept the internal rules and they send a confirmation. So uh, this takes uh, less than one minute. Uh, to conclude, I would like to talk to you about uh, the MPA uh, Penisola del Sinis Isola di Maldiventri, where uh, we work together. So uh, after the call of, of interest on Blue Mooring, uh, so in 2003 uh, they uh, made the first implementation of the boys on uh, on Sinis MPA. In 2022, uh, so now they have a total uh, in total four mooring zones and uh, 99 boys. Uh, they implemented uh, for the first time a mooring fee, and then they made um, uh, a second uh, augmentation of uh, of this fee, and it's now around uh, 12 euros per day. So uh, in Sinis, the fees collection process is that uh, the boaters has to pay directly uh, on Blue Mooring since uh, last month, and uh, the collected mooring fees are, are directly uh, injected within the MPA. Uh, so uh, here are some uh, photos uh, we took after the implementation uh, of Blue Mooring in Sinis. Uh, to conclude, I wanted to, uh, to add that uh, by working actually with MPA managers, uh, we made the tool very adaptable to uh, many configurations regarding the MPAs. So uh, they can either only monitor the activity of diving clubs within the MPA, or uh, the, only the activity of boaters. Uh, it could be used for fee collection or only uh, uh, free of use. So it's only to monitor the, the activity uh, on site. And uh, as I said, the V2 will be released in two weeks. So uh, you can feel free to contact us if you have questions or if you want to demo or for further discussions, we'll be happy to uh, exchange with you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Louis and uh, Yusra. Um, so at this time, we have plenty of time for questions from the audience. So audience members, as a reminder, you can type your questions into the question box that is on the bottom of your control panel, which is found on the right hand side of your screen. If you type the question into the question box, I will see it and pose it to our speakers. At the moment, we do not have, ah, here we go. First question is, are the moorings strong enough for offshore use? Is there a spec sheet? Sorry, Zach, can you repeat? Uh, someone asks whether or not the moorings are strong enough for offshore use and whether or not you have a spec sheet that you can share about the moorings. Uh, 
Okay, so we uh, don't provide the moorings. We provide only the mooring management tool. So uh, this tool is actually a, a platform which is adaptable to any type of existing moorings. So it could be a regular mooring, it could be a high tech moorings. Um, I think it answers the questions. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Um, Thank a number of questions coming in about the same thing, so I'm just going to cover it right away, uh, asking what the cost of the tool and service is. So what is the cost of Blue Mooring to the MPA managers? Okay, uh, so uh, there is uh, several costs depending of the type of the use. Uh, so uh, only to get uh, the um, the showcased page uh, of the MPA on Blue Mooring and uh, providing all the information to users, this could can be done for free. Only have to contact us and we'll give you the access. Uh, then uh, to manage uh, the mooring zones without uh, collection fees, uh, we are around uh, 300 euros. And then uh, there is uh, another level if there is a fee collection. But um, we decided to put this price uh, regarding the uh, uh, the the actual use in different sites and the, the aim of this project is uh, to uh, uh, help MPA managers collect the fees and uh, use the fees to their own activities uh, so we uh, if you want to uh, a special code regarding your own uh, MPA, you can uh, contact us by email and uh, we can send you this. Thank you. Quick follow up to that the 300 euro that you mentioned is that a yearly fee or is that a one time payment? Yearly fee. Yearly fee. Thank you. Uh, we have a couple of questions around how you, how people have convinced boaters to make use of the charged buoys and moorings rather than illegal moorings um, and around that is compliance on paying the fee versus not paying the fee so kind of two parts to that question have the mpas you worked with been able to find a way to make sure that people are using the charged the the the, the moorings that are being charged for rather than illegal moorings or mooring illegally. And then even when they do use the moorings that um, they're charging for, is there any data on compliance as to whether or not they're actually paying those fees or just mooring their illegal? Um, so uh, for the what we saw regarding our experience with the MPAs, uh, it's never uh easy to implement something new wh wherever the context is but uh people are very quickly aware that if they pay for something it means that this thing is valuable uh so it enters very quickly uh in uh, the the habits of the voters it's not uh something uh, very complicated that's what i noticed and uh for uh, the the control generally they have someone who is making a few controls and actually the tool helps them uh, to uh, with this real-time view uh, to uh, interact interact more uh, specifically uh, on site uh, if they see that on blue Marine, the boys are 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 not uh, booked but uh, there is a, a boat over there then they can uh, uh go to him and discuss with him so uh louis i don't know if you want to add something but uh, okay no no that's it and um, uh, this real-time view is really the solutions to be to to make the the work more easy for for rangers i think Thank you. Yeah, lots of questions coming in about enforcement. So a similar one, which may be partly answered by the answer you just gave. Uh, someone noting that in in their MPA, when a boat doesn't pay the fee and doesn't have uh, any kind of licensing or identification on the boat that makes it easy to identify, um, it's a problem. It, 
is so that's obviously a problem for law enforcement. So they're wonder that problem. They're wondering if the if the system blue mooring system provides some kind of way to help rangers and or law enforcement with identifying that boat or um, any kind of enforcement of the illegal use of that one. Well, the the two uh, main points is that uh, when the boat arrives, he sees the information on the boy, he sees the information on site, so he's informed that they had to pay. Though they can see, they can say, I I, I didn't know. Uh, this is the first point. Second point, uh, when they go on blue mooring, because it's indicated you have to go here uh, to book, uh, they have information about the the rules, the regulations, uh, the uh, yes, internal rules of the MPA, and uh, and third for the rangers and uh, sometimes also uh, policemen or whatever they can uh, the MPA manager gives access to this ranger view, which is uh, specifically made uh, uh, to see only the real time view of the mooring zones, and that's it. They don't have access uh, to. Uh, the the pricing to uh, the to change information actually uh, that MPA manager entered on Bloomering they only have access to this real time view map uh, and this help them uh, to uh, uh, yes to thank you um, another question does the system allow for advanced booking of a mooring or only real-time arrivals on the day of use? Well, we have a different type of, uh, of use. Uh, some MPAs only uh, charge for uh, a day, uh, some MPAs charge for night, some MPAs charge for a few hours. Uh, so uh, we try to do our best to make it um, adaptable to any type of, uh, of use for MPA managers. And um, uh, yeah, I forgot <laughs> the beginning. Yes, I think that, that largely largely covered it. Um, so we do have uh, a comment that's come in. They say, note a comment rather than a question that I'm wondering if you both would like to possibly respond to or build off of. They note that last year they sailed to the Adagi Islands west of Sicily. I know I butchered that name, I apologize. And when they moored their boat, the park officer came out uh, allowing them to pay the fee. And then the park officer gave this person some flyers about the park. They note that they think park managers aren't yet uh, accustomed to using apps and other such technology because of the challenges that these apps or just in general may have with monitoring and enforcement. So do you have any response to that? Any way that maybe blue mooring might be designed to help with help um, managers or rangers that are uncomfortable with such an app or aren't used to using this technology? Uh, okay, so um, we had Actually, not with uh, rangers, but we had the case with uh, diving clubs who uh, were not very willing to uh, to a new tool, and uh, uh, they didn't want to use their phone. And uh, they thought at the beginning it was a, a complication for them actually to make uh, the effort to uh, to do this uh, online. And uh, well, we took the time, and the MPA manager took the time because uh, he has the decision about this and um, it's very important uh, to 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 think um, that stakeholders involvement is uh, the key for all of this and to discuss with uh, all the parties and, uh, and at the end they were convinced of uh, of um, of the advantage for the MPA managers and why they are doing this and why this will help them in their day-to-day -day work and why it's important. And uh, after that, uh, well, they, they made the effort and it was uh, way easy. So I think it's the same with rangers and, uh, and uh, anyone involved in the process. And um, uh, it's really important because uh, we developed a, a very simply uh, user interface, uh, user experience, um, and that's why I think it's Simpler to to 
to adapt the user experience for every interface for boaters, for MPA manager, and for diving uh, club, for example. Thank you. Uh, you talked a little about the pilot project that you all had in Italy. We have someone wondering whether or not you have a pilot project planned for the Americas. Uh, well, we are always looking for sites. So, uh, of course, if anyone is interested or wants uh, a demo more in details, we can discuss further about uh, the project and, uh, and uh, about uh, your special needs. Uh, I, I will be happy to discuss with you. Of course, uh, this is applicable uh, anywhere, actually. We have discussions with people in Asia, uh, in uh, 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 Indian Ocean, so yes, America also, yeah. Thank you. Um, someone noting that earlier when you talked about price, you, you mentioned that the price differs a little bit if you charge for moorings. They're wondering how much does the price change or is that something that needs to be determined on a um, on a site-by-site -site basis? It depends only by the number of boys you have on your mooring zone so it's uh, uh, a fixed fee per number of boys uh, it's around uh, 60 euros per year per, per boy uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, someone wondering whether or not you anticipate expanding this tool outside of MPAs. They note that the state waters of Hawaii has moorings throughout nearshore waters. So not necessarily in an MPA, but potentially no. another user that could use this. Yes, we are not close to, to uh, the MPAs, but uh, it's very important that uh, the site we are working with uh, has conservation aim in a way or another. Uh, for us, it's very important to provide awareness for the users. Uh, but no, it's not only uh, MPAs. We are working with the uh, marine reserves. With uh, in France, we call this as MEL. It's a uh, specific mooring zones on uh, not only on MPAs, but. Uh, Great, thank you. At the moment, we don't seem to have any other questions that have come in. Does anybody else have, we'll give another minute or two for any other uh, attendees who may want to ask a question. In the meantime, is there anything else that you both would like to say to, to potentially start wrapping up? Yes, I, I wanted to add something because um, uh, it's interesting to talk about the example of uh, of the, the site uh, of Chauzet in the north of France, uh, they didn't, didn't have enough uh, internet data when we, we started working with them. So uh, people couldn't make uh, the booking directly uh, uh, online, uh, but they decided uh, to uh, start using the tool. Uh, and uh, so the ranger has the possibility uh, to get the fees uh, by cash or a, a check or any other way. And uh, he can make uh, the booking for the user on his laptop, okay, on uh, Bloomering. Uh, the ranger has uh, this possibility. So uh, yes, it's interesting to, to see that um, they use it in a low context and uh, they are waiting to get uh, the internet coverage uh, to, uh, uh, to make the 100% bloomering open to everyone. Great, thank you. Um, another question asking, well, we do have a couple more questions who have that have come in. Uh, so the first is wondering whether or not you all have done any research on whether or not the the, mo the moorings provide any conservation values such as benthic habitat protection so noting that moorings in general do often help to uh, prevent pr provide places so that it avoids people from anchoring so i guess one of the ways to help raise this question as well is whether or not 
your all system helps to increase the number of buoys and in that way increase the conservation value that those buoys have. Well, well I um, actually the mooring fees collected can be used by uh, so many ways. It's up to the MPA management body to decide. Uh, they can use these fees uh, to uh, make uh, the maintenance of the actual buoy. Uh, they uh, can make, uh, it depends of how much money they earn with these mooring fees. They can uh, decide to implement a new mooring zone. Uh, they, uh, they have this range of possibilities. So yes, in this way, they, this can help them to implement a new zone or new buoys. And for in more, we, we can help uh, the the manager to make the scoping phase to identify uh, the real opportunity to implement uh, a new mooring fee or not. And um, so uh, before using blue mooring, we can help uh, MPA manager to to make this scoping phase. Thank you. Uh, uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, actually, there is a process. Uh, it's in the guide I, I showed you earlier. But uh, uh, there is a process if you don't have actually now a mooring fee implementation in your MPA and you want to do it, there are specific step-by-step uh, -step, uh, process to follow. And uh, and we, we uh, at Blue Seeds uh, are able to help you with this uh, and uh, accompany you and uh, make a uh, well, there are specific needs and even uh, help you define the price uh, that uh, should be uh, uh, implemented in your uh, specific zone. <clears throat> Great, thank you. Um, wondering whether or not the the fee, the, 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 blank, the blanket fee that you all noted earlier, the 300 euro, for an organization that manages more than one MPA, is that fee per MPA or for the organization? So for example, if an organization manages two MPAs, would they be paying 300 euro or 600? Well, I want to answer them to, to, to just contact us and, uh, and we see this because, uh, um, well, it depends on the size and it depends if it's very close, it depends of, uh, if it's uh, the same, for example, if it's for uh, a diving um, uh, club uh, monitoring and uh, that's uh, the same uh, uh, diving clubs that are operating on the both MPAs, of, uh, it's better to see case by case. Thank you. Um, someone asking how you've achieved, how you've achieved getting people to use the moorings instead of anchoring. So. Um, did you all have any role in that? Does the uh, have you seen any improvement with by by implementing the use of blue mooring, or is this something that really just falls to the to the managers and the outreach? Uh, blue mooring has only one year now, and uh, the the first year it was a development year with the with the. the those MPAs, so uh, we cannot uh, say that we already have results about this now. But I think MPA managers are able to uh, to, to say that uh, when they implemented uh, the moorings, uh, anchors, uh, of course, were uh, less important on their side. Thank you. Um, someone once again wondering when the app is going to be released. I know you mentioned later this month. Do you have a particular? Uh, yes. Is there In two weeks? Two weeks. Great. Thank you. And yeah. when it is launched, is that is it going to be available on something like an app store, or is this? Uh, do they need to contact you all to figure all that usage out? Actually, uh, the idea was uh, to make a web app, so not. Uh, an application that people have to download on their phone. Once again, we are trying to make uh, the things more easy as yes, possible for uh, for the boaters uh, to get used to it and to make the effort to make this booking. So uh, now it's uh, available online directly. No need to uh, to download. Thank you. 
Was there a company wondering how blue mooring works for things like commercial companies that might use the same mooring daily? Do you have any structure set up for yearly fees, monthly fees, rather than just the daily fee? Yes, sure. Uh, it's what I call the pass, but maybe it was not clear enough. But actually, yes, they uh, they are able to uh, to sell uh, daily or uh, monthly fee, uh, yearly fee. Uh, there are also uh, sites that, that have specific fee for locals and the specific fee for visitors outside the city. Uh, yes, it's already you, you, available. You, you can set up the passes. Um, um how you how you need um and uh, if uh, the 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 main um uh, uh, setup is not existing on bloomering we can develop that with with you yes the aim is uh is to co-develop this uh to help the mpa managers so uh what we did till now is uh, to look for the specific needs and to provide uh, adapted solution for this but for this specific point is already available yeah. thank you yeah it sounds like you have a very flexible tool at the moment we don't have any more questions that have come in however we do have some time left so i want to give another minute or two for any attendees who might have a question to go ahead and uh, put it into the question box i know Sometimes when you hear questions coming one after the other, you think there's a flood of them in, so you don't want to bother with putting a question and it won't be answered. But telling you now, we got plenty of time left. So if you have a question, please go ahead and type it into the question box and we'll make sure we get to that. And there we go. We have one that's popped in, uh, noting that in regions where enforcement is low, what is your advice? Um, is there is there is definitely a need for proper enforcement to minimize illegal moorings and anchoring. So asking your advice on what to do in regions where enforcement is low, or I would also add difficult. Yes, I think it's uh, it's important that the law uh, follows actually uh, to to uh, uh, to help the MPA managers, and uh, it's. Uh, something we are working with for example now um, we have uh, discussions with uh, mpas in croatia uh, who um, actually they collect mooring fees but the mooring fees are not reinjected within the mpa and uh, they want to make a plea like a plea with uh, their ministry to help them uh, uh, change the process so it's important to uh, again to 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 make this stakeholders involvement to discuss with everyone and to try to find the best solution uh, to change uh, to change the, the regulations if it's not uh, good enough for the, the MP. Thank you. We don't seem to have any more questions that have come in at this time. So I want to ask you both if you have anything that you would like to say to close out. um what i can say more well uh really again feel free to uh to contact us uh, uh we are very flexible and uh, maybe we can help not even uh, uh by implementing the blue ring because we have the cases with the site they want to use it but they're not able right now uh to uh, uh to make it so uh we are we have said that are willing to implement mooring zones but it's a project for in one year in two years uh we have said they are willing to implement a mooring fee but it's not uh the case uh, and we are helping them in the process so um, uh, each mpa or each site have its, its specific needs and uh, and needs a specific response to it Great. Well, I just want to say thank you, Yusa and Louis, um, and thank you to all of our attendees. This has been a great webinar. So thank you to everyone, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Zach. Thank you and thank you to everyone. Much.